Good morning, kids. It is a beautiful day and we're so excited to be here with all of you today. We have been waiting all week to see all of you and we have a very fun episode in store for you all today. Joby and I heard this story this week. It's so cool. It's about how the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell an Ethiopian man about Jesus. How amazing. Take a seat, kids. It's time to get started. An angel of the Lord has called me to go to a road in the desert, and so I will go. Hello, kind sir. My name is Philip. How could I help you today? I do not understand the scripture I am reading, and I need help. Can you help me? Absolutely, I can help you. The scripture you are reading says, He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. For this life has been taken from the earth. Was Isaiah talking about himself or another person? You see, Isaiah's words were not about himself. They were about the Messiah, Jesus. That's amazing. I believe in Jesus. Can I be baptized? Oh, absolutely you can be baptized. Let's go right now and get you baptized. An angel of the Lord told Philip, a follower of Jesus, to go to a desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. So Philip went. On the road was a man from Ethiopia. He was an important official to the queen of Ethiopia. The man had come to worship in Jerusalem, and now he was on his way home. He sat in his chariot, reading aloud the words of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot. So Philip ran up to it. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked the man. The official replied, How can I unless someone explains it to me? He invited Philip into his chariot, and Philip sat with him. The official was reading these words from Isaiah. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. He was treated unfairly, and his life is taken away. The official asked, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? Isaiah was talking about the Messiah. So Philip began to tell the man the good news about Jesus. As they traveled down the road, they came to some water. What would keep me from being baptized? The official asked. Then the official told the chariot to stop. He and Philip went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit took Philip away. The official continued home and he was very happy. The Ethiopian official knew what the Old Testament prophets said, but he did not understand that they spoke about Jesus. The Holy Spirit led Philip to help the official understand the good news about Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead, just like the Old Testament prophets said. As Philip left Jerusalem, he knew his mission. He couldn't stop telling others about Jesus and showing his love. My favorite part of the story is Philip's example of obedience. When God told Philip to go somewhere or do something, he did it. The Bible doesn't tell us that God laid out all the details of what would happen next. What God did tell Philip though, is an angel of the Lord told Philip to go to the desert road between Jerusalem and Gaza. And Philip went. As he was traveling, he saw a chariot. The Holy Spirit told Philip to go to the chariot, and so he did. Then the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell the Ethiopian man about Jesus. So Philip got into the chariot and explained the good news of Jesus. What happened because Philip shared? Philip got to baptize the official. Philip was obedient with each next step, trusting whatever God had planned for him. He is a great example for us. When we trust Jesus enough to listen and be obedient to what he says to us, we can be used in amazing ways to spread the good news about Jesus. Hi 
there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Paisley from Iowa Falls, Iowa asks, Is it okay to be friends with someone who isn't a Christian? Paisley, what a wonderful question. I am glad you asked. Big answer first before we go any farther. Yes, it is okay. It's not just okay. It's good that you're friends with people who are not Christians. But let me unpack that a little bit more for a minute or two. You know, first of all, I think the reason for this is is what we saw in today's Bible story, how the Holy Spirit led Philip to tell this Ethiopian man about Jesus, that God's heart, his desire is that we be in relationship with people who don't know him so that we can tell them about him. That's the big reason it's good for you to be friends with people who are not Christians. It's not just okay, you should try to be. Now, here's the thing. God wants us to care about all people like he cares about all people. Think about Jesus. He was a friend of sinners, wasn't he? He he got yelled at by some of the Jewish leaders because he would have meals with sinners, people who were outcasts. And we should follow that too. We should love and care about people who don't know Jesus because we value them as people. But here's the thing. We really need to be careful as well. We want to influence our friends who are not believers for Jesus instead of us allowing ourselves to be influenced by them in bad ways. That can happen. And so as we're friends with unbelievers, we really need to be careful not to let them change how we're living. That can happen at times. I would also say this. Our best friends should be believers. Ideally, your best friend should be somebody who has the most in common with you. And God is so important. How can we really be the best of friends with somebody who doesn't share something so important? So again, I think you can be best friends with somebody who's not a believer, but I think it's best that you are best friends with somebody who shares Jesus in their lives like you share him and you have him in your life. So here's a question back for you. How many people do you encounter each day? And how many of them need to hear the good news about Jesus? We're going to have some music playing and we're going to pass it back and forth between me and Joby, like this. And then when the music stops, whatever my right thumb lands on is how many words we're going to take out of the memory verse this week. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Start that music, Evan. (laughs) All right. So, we landed on three, which means we are going to take three words out of the memory verse. Read it with me now, kids. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have first place in everything. Colossians 1.18. All right, great. So, we're going to try that again. We're going to do it two more times, and it's going to be a blast. Ready? Four. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> nice. So, Joby got four as well, which means she's going to read it, and we're going to take four different words out of the verse. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have first place in everything. Colossians 1.18. All right, one more round. Let's hope we get something a little bit more than four, maybe a six. Do you think <laughs> we can go to six? I mean, we could try. Let's try for a six. I feel like we could probably rig it. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) We got a four again. That's unfortunate. (laughs) Unfortunate. I'm too good. Anyway, so we're going to read the verse again with four different words taken out. Here we go. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might have first place in everything. Colossians 1, 18. All right, that was super fun, kids. Um, This one's a little bit more difficult for you to try at home if you don't have a big dice like this, but if you have a small dice, you could try it at home for sure. 
Uh, let's get our Bibles now and then meet back here once you have them. Now that we all have our Bibles, let's turn to Deuteronomy 28.1 and read. If you obey the Lord your God and faithfully keep His commands that I'm giving you today, He will make you greater than any other nation on earth. God promises to bless us when we are willing to obey Him. He already knows what is best for us, so when we follow that plan, blessings will come. And helping other people learn about Jesus because we share His love is an amazing blessing for us too. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shine. I will follow you, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore.
Jesus has the power to change our hearts towards him, show us his amazing and unconditional love, and be the one we look to in times of need. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your amazing love for us. Thank you that you allow us to be part of your plan to share your love with other people. Help us to be obedient like Philip and trusting with each next step as you reveal them to us. Amen.